Have you ever questioned the nature of reality? Is the world as we perceive it truly as it seems? Or is there more than meets the eye? From the debates among early Greek philosophers to the forefront of modern quantum physics, this question is still with us today. Picture the world of ancient Greece. The philosopher Democritus and later Epicurus proposed and defended materialism. Democritus, as well as Epicurus, held that all matter is made up of extremely tiny solid particles known as atoms. The word atom is derived from the ancient Greek adjective atomos, meaning uncuttable or indivisible. In Democritus's philosophy, atoms existed not only for matter, but also for such qualities as perception and the human soul. In short, he believed that everything from the ground beneath our feet to the thoughts in our minds was composed of tiny, solid particles he called atoms. Democritus's atom theory is widely regarded as the birth of materialism, an ideology that holds the physical world as the ultimate reality. It hardly needs to be said, but materialism and or atheistic naturalism is the dominant philosophy held by many scientists today. Fast forward a few centuries from Democritus to another prominent Greek philosopher, Plato. Plato, as well as his student Aristotle, rejected Democritus's atomic theory. They valued abstract ideas more than the physical world. In particular, Platonic idealism holds that the physical world is not as real or true as the Platonic realm of forms. In fact, Plato held objects and matter in the physical world were merely imitations and or shadows of the perfect Platonic realm of immaterial forms. And more generally, ancient Greek philosophers in the Aristotelian tradition referred to the necessity of a nous, mind and logos, reason or rationality, behind all things. In short, the debate between these ancient Greek philosophers boiled down to whether material or mind should be the primary substratum upon which everything else is based. And although materialism and or atheistic naturalism is the dominant philosophy held by many scientists today, it is worth noting that modern science itself was born in medieval Christian Europe by men who firmly believed that nature had been designed by the mind of a rational god, the same god who made the rational minds of human beings. In short, modern science was brought forth by men who firmly believed in the mind-first conception of nature. Since materialism is, for whatever reason, the dominant philosophy held by many scientists today, then it is very interesting to note, in a twist of irony, that science itself, specifically quantum mechanics, has now overturned materialism. Werner Heisenberg, one of the key pioneers of quantum theory, brought this centuries-old philosophical debate home and stated, I think that modern physics has definitely decided in favor of Plato. In fact, the smallest units of matter are not physical objects in the ordinary sense. They are forms, ideas which can be expressed unambiguously only in mathematical language. Eugene Wigner also weighed in on this ancient philosophical debate, stating, while a number of philosophic ideas may be logically consistent with present quantum mechanics, materialism is not. But what does this mean? In essence, quantum mechanics has now shown us that the foundation of reality is not solid, not material. The timeline on the history of atomic models, from the ancient Greek's billiard ball model of the atom, to the present-day quantum cloud model of the atom, reveals that there is simply nothing solid within the atom as was originally presupposed within materialism. This image of atoms made by Don Eigler of IBM also brings this point home. There is simply nothing solid within the atom as was originally presupposed within materialism. Rather, the atom itself turns out to be elusive, abstract, immaterial. As Bernardo Castrop stated in his 2019 article, Physics is Pointing Inexorably to Mind, as our understanding of physics progressed, we've realized that atoms themselves can be further divided into smaller bits and those into yet smaller ones, and so on, until what is left lacks shape and solidity altogether. At the bottom of the chain of physical reduction, there are only elusive, phantasmal entities we label as energy and fields. Abstract conceptual tools for describing nature, which themselves seem to lack any real concrete essence. In short, the foundation of reality is turning out to be to be immaterial, not material in its foundational essence. As the renowned physicist John Wheeler succinctly put it, it from bit symbolizes the idea that every item of the physical world has at bottom, at a very deep bottom in most instances, an immaterial source and explanation. 
that what we call reality arises in the last analysis from the posing of yes-no questions and the registering of equipment-evoked responses. In short, that all things physical are information-theoretic in origin, and this is a participatory universe. So the shift from materialism to immaterialism is more than just an ancient philosophical debate, it is now a scientific debate with science landing squarely on the side of Plato. To repeat Heisenberg, modern physics has definitely decided in favor of Plato. In fact the smallest units of matter are not physical objects in the ordinary sense, they are forms, ideas which can be expressed unambiguously only in mathematical language. Seeing that many scientists today have unquestionably presupposed that materialism is true, this shift represents a radical reimagining of the nature of reality itself. Contrary to what the ancient Greeks and many scientists today believe, materialism is unambiguously shown to be false by quantum mechanics. Moreover, the problems for materialism run far deeper than quantum theory. As Eugene Wigner stated, the principal argument against materialism is not that illustrated in the last two sections, that it is incompatible with quantum theory. The principal argument is that thought processes and consciousness are the primary concepts, that our knowledge of the external world is the content of our consciousness, and that the consciousness therefore cannot be denied. On the contrary, logically, the external world could be denied, though it is not very practical to do so. In view of all this, one may well wonder how materialism, the doctrine that life could be explained by sophisticated combinations of physical and chemical laws, could so long be accepted by the majority of scientists. In conclusion, the journey from Democritus's materialism to the decisive refutation of materialism by quantum mechanics has been a long and winding one. It has challenged our understanding of the world, forcing us to reconsider what we thought we knew about reality, and in the end, it has led us to a realization that the foundation of the universe is immaterial, not material. The physical world, to put it mildly, is not all there is.